Hello, and welcome to ATP Report. Joining me is the bestest Katie Hopkins ever, still in Mexico for Katie and Barry discussion. Hola, Katie. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. Hola, right back at you. And you will see I am now under a Mexican stairwell. Do not say I don't bring ATP to the most interesting places. Oh, clearly. Uh, <laughs> really nice set. So there's a mass shooting, yet another one, sadly, uh, this one in Boulder, Colorado. And the story has changed quite dramatically from the last day or so till today. And what I mean by that is the first reports coming out were this guy that shot up a supermarket and killed a bunch of people was a neo-Nazi white supremacist Trump supporter. Well, that story changed this morning when the shooter's name was announced and his background uh, was revealed. The guy's name is Ahmad al-Aliwi al-Issa. He's a Syrian immigrant who did not have this as political, but probably as religious. But here come the pundits, starting with former President Barack Obama, who blamed the shooting, get this, on racism. And Barack Obama says, this is an example of why we need gun control. So Katie, first question. In your experience, do criminals observe gun control laws? Oh, Barry, I mean, it's an absolute, I mean, I'd say joke, except it isn't funny, is it? Uh, good on you as well for pronouncing that gentleman's name. I wouldn't be uh, trying that myself. But I live in a country normally in the UK. We, we don't have weapons. We're not allowed guns. There is no such thing as, you know, a First Amendment, let alone a Second Amendment uh, in the UK. So we can't have guns. And yet there are nightly shootouts in the UK. You always hear of some form of gun, a drive-by gun shooting. There was one just last night in one of our cities. It's not as if people who are determined to do the wrong thing are going to change their mind because there's some sort of registration process or you make access harder. Uh, and I think the most annoying thing, Barry, of all, is this uh, incredibly swift pivot around to, oh, it's about gun control. You know, you'll know, and, and I know personally, when people assumed it was a white nationalist, white supremacist, Trump supporter, whatever you call that person, I, I have a flood of messages saying, oh, okay, Katie, so you're not going to say anything, I suppose, about Boulder. You're not going to say anything about the shootout. Already attacking someone like myself for not saying anything, whereas I just waited, as you did, I'm sure, to hear what was going on before we ne needed to talk about it. They just loved the idea that it was a Trump supporter. They loved the idea that it was a white guy. And I think it was Kamala Harris's own niece that said, the only reason the shooter is still alive is because he's white. And funnily enough, none of that proved out to be true, did it? Well, not only is he not white, um, he is an enthusiastic Islamist, which we'll talk about in a second. But mm -hmm. I want to follow up on something that's rather important because of the press releases coming out like crazy today, especially out of Congress people who are jumping on the bandwagon about gun-free zones. You know, the biggest gun-free zone in a city in America is Chicago. Uh -huh. um, the gun laws there are extremely onerous. And yet they're the murder and shooting capital of the United States. And it always strikes me as weird when you see these signs from Chicago uh, around schools, as an example, entering gun-free zone. I, I don't know how many criminals drive past one of those signs and pull over and go, oh crap, gun-free zone, <laughs> roll down the window and throw their weapons out into the street so they don't violate the law. <laughs> it reminds me when I was a kid, when guns are outlawed, only outlaws will have guns. And maybe that's the case here. Yeah, it's absolutely the case, uh, Barry. And we have some knife crime in London. 
uh, the sort of parallel, but not the same, I appreciate. But this idea that you could then ban knives, you know, and Sadiq Khan, our ridiculous Muslim mayor of London, set up these knife banks. So in the same way that you might have recycling banks or places that take their plastic, people take their plastic bottles, he had knife banks. And the idea was that, yeah, okay, I'm a gangland drug dealer that's going to need to retaliate, you know, to protect my postcode. Oh, yes, I'm going to go to that nice recycling knife bank and hand in my knives. I mean, please, how ridiculous do you have to be? I also think, Barry, there's a weird thing that happens, isn't there? Something horrible happens, like this shootout. We would all agree, it's horrible, it's horrible. Some people were in that supermarket, that grocery store, and they were just, they were just having an ordinary day. We go very quickly now, don't we? We go past whatever those people were. You know, decent Americans, their story, their relatives, their, we go straight to the politics of the thing, the swivel, the gun control. It all happens in, it's almost like time has been compressed, isn't it? Compared to how things used to be. Well, yeah. And the part that really bothers me quite a bit is the most important fact. Um, President Trump, in one of his first moves in office way back when, if you can remember four years ago, was to ban immigration from countries without background checks like Syria. Well, this shooter was from Syria. And there are other examples, Katie Hopkins, of shooters uh, coming into the country, um, bringing their radical ideology with them. I've got a couple examples. You know, the 2016 mass murder at the Pulse nightclub, uh, what, 49 people died. That guy was from Afghanistan. Omar Mateen, and he had pledged allegiance to ISIS. In 2015, five people were killed in Chattanooga, Tennessee by a Kuwaiti-born guy named Mohammed Abdul Aziz. And in 2015, 14 people were murdered by a Pakistani-American couple that were radicalized. Why is it impossible for us to draw links between radical jihadis killing people because of their belief system and the inability of the American press to mention those details. Doesn't that seem really important to you? Absolutely. And the only way we ever fix a problem, no matter what that problem is, is by calling it what it is. You know, we know in our personal private lives, the way we fix a problem is we have to acknowledge what the actual problem is. And every time, the same in my country as well, after the Manchester Arena bombing, after the stabbing of the policemen outside of the Houses of Parliament, every terror attack in our country that happens at the hands of a, somebody who believes in the Islamic faith, we are not allowed to talk about it. And in fact, the very, you know, the sort of, that, that becomes reinforced. The first thing the police do in, in our country after there's an Islamist or Islamic terror attack is they come bowling out of their police stations and they say, what we need to be very careful of and very aware of is retaliatory attacks on Muslims and Islamophobia. And what we must do is protect the Muslim community. And it seems like for their side, there is no way that this is allowed to be associated with them. And you know Barry very well, if that guy had been a Trump supporter, we would never have heard the end of the fact that Trump and all the rest of us, me included, are to blame for the deaths of those Americans and whomever else in that grocery store. Well, I, I, this, this problem actually runs even deeper than what you said. And by the way, I agree with everything you just said, Katie. Um, this guy had some Facebook posts um, that were screen grabbed and he has a lot of uh, posts on there about he, he hates people who are creating an Islamophobic uh, environment. Uh, he had quotes from Mohammed on his Facebook. Um, it's obviously, uh, if not totally radicalized, this guy was a believer. And why is it that all the first talking points, you know, He's a gun nut and he's a Trumper and he's a uh, right wing um, nationalist and he is all about 
uh, domestic terrorism because he's white. And the truth is none of that is true. Facebook got expunged and the quotes are all gone. I read them this morning and I looked at it and I thought, oh my gosh. So on top of that, on top of that, the press is reporting in Colorado that nobody can figure out a motive for the killing. Uh, I Why is it? How does that, how do the Muslim faith acquire this ability to have instant protection over themselves? You know, the dissolving of a Facebook page, the taking down of other posts. Nobody, it's one of the things I find so annoying and it's always been, well, it's got, it's what's got me into the most trouble in the UK is calling out leaders of the Muslim faith for not coming out and condemning this sort of thing. I am sick and tired and I will say it until my last day. People say, oh, it's nothing to do with Islam, fine. But you never hear leaders of the Islamic faith come out and say, we completely condemn what that man did. He doesn't represent the faith. This is not what Islam is about. I don't hear those people. I might see some staged, you know, oh, sorry, and the Muslim ladies handing out roses or whatever. But I do not see leaders coming out and condemning this. Every time Islam is protected, like it's some sort of special power none of us can go near. You know, I say to people when they call me Islamophobic, well, actually, my own Islamophobia came about when a couple of jihadis tried to chop my head off. You know, it's not Islamophobia, it's rational fear of something that hates you. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm a little bit over animated, but it really, really, this does grip me because we've seen this through our different countries, through our lifetimes. And why can't people, if they don't love the country they come to join, America, you aren't decent enough to love America, then just stay out of it. Leave Americans alone. Katie, I, I hear your story and I know it's true, so I sympathize with you. I can imagine for someone like you, as prominent as you've been in the media, the idea of being separated from your lovely head is not something that you take lightly and should not. And for some reason, we as a society can't call it what it is, which mm -hmm. is they don't like us. They want to kill us or convert us. And I'm, and I'm talking specifically about those that are jihadis. They are carrying out the mission to conquer our country by the book, or by the sword. And in Colorado, it was by the sword. I get it. You're right. And I'm sorry you had to go through that. Oh, you know, Barry, I, I don't want anyone else to go through it. And, and the point is today, 10, 12, I mean, how many is that final number have gone through it? And, and families, you know, this doesn't move on. This isn't just something Ted Cruz throws away about gun control or, you know, another politician comes out and has their moment in Congress about. This is families who now live with this for the rest of their lives. And, and that's where we, that's why all of this fails people. If we fail to call out the problem, we fail American families and they are the ones that pay the price. And, and that breaks all our hearts, I'm sure here at ATP. Well said, Katie Hopkins, and thanks for coming on today to talk about this rather serious subject. And for all of you out there in ATP land, I want to remind you, if you haven't yet, to please take out your cell phone, do us a favor, and send the simple message, TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, and address it to the number 88202. Push send on your cell phone. In about three seconds, you'll be signed up for free to get all of our content for free on your cell phone. For Katie, I'm Barry Newsbaum. Thanks for joining us today.